So in this video, we are going to compare the profit maximization decision in perfect competition uh, versus monopoly. So those are the two extremes uh, that we think about in microeconomics and industrial organization. So our general setup is going to be the same for both. We're going to have the same uh, market demand curve. So remember, market demand slopes down. Um, and in our linear demand curve, uh, which we write as an inverse demand curve, right, because we have P... Uh, price on the vertical axis, it's P equals A minus BQ. So A is the vertical intercept uh, and B or minus B is the slope. We're going to have a constant marginal cost. Uh, so our total cost function is just C times Q and our marginal cost then is just C. And remember in profit maximization, what we're going to do all the time is set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Um, no matter what, right? And it just depends uh, what that marginal revenue and marginal cost looks like depending on the uh, market structure. So just a reminder of our assumptions for perfect competition, right? So we're going to assume that firms are profit maximizers, but they produce the same good as everybody else, right? So this is most realistic in things like uh, commodities, agricultural products, um, natural resources, things like oil or steel, um, so it's all the same, right? There's nothing to differentiate the products. There are lots of firms. So one of the things about perfect competition uh, is that firms don't like perfect competition, right? And so a lot of times what we'll see if there's no regulation is that we'll get fewer and fewer firms so that they can uh, have more market power. Um, in perfect competition, there are many identical firms so that no firm has any market power. Uh, there are no barriers to entry or exit. Um, so firms can enter and exit freely and there are no frictions or other forms of market imperfection. So these are those last two, especially are probably the most unrealistic. Um, many identical firms we don't see in a lot of industries, but we do see in some, um, you know, typically, you know, farming. We might have lots of farmers producing the same type of good. Um, but then there will there will be some barriers to, to entry uh, even in in those markets. So in perfect competition, we have a downward sloping market demand curve, right? And of course, an upward sloping uh, market supply curve. But the, the demand curve that each firm faces is flat because they can sell as much as they want at the market price, right? P star, but they can't sell at any at a higher price and they wouldn't want to sell any at a lower price. And so they just face a flat market demand curve. And so that's an important thing to remember in perfect competition that even though the market demand curve slopes down, the firm demand curve is horizontal. And so total revenue is just going to be an upward sloping line. In this example, price is set to two. And so the slope of the total revenue curve is two. Um, but it will always just be equal to the price, right? So if you sell one unit, you're going to have a total revenue of two. If you sell two units, you're going to have total revenue of four. And then marginal revenue, so how much extra revenue you get is just equal to the price because the price is always the same, right? Because you face that horizontal um, demand curve. And so in this case, for perfect competition, right? And we're going to see that this is not true uh, in Monopoly. Marginal revenue and average revenue are both the same and they're just both equal to P star uh, or the market price. And so profit maximization says, all right, well, profit maximization says we want to maximize total revenue minus total cost. Um, and in order to do that, they're going to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Well, in this case, marginal revenue is very straightforward. It's just P, right, or P star, the, the market price. And so we're going to set that equal to marginal cost. Um, and in our case, we have an upward sloping marginal cost curve here just to make it interesting. Um, but then that will give us, in this case, we'll be able to solve for our optimal Q star, right? Now note that if uh, marginal cost is constant here, um, we're not gonna get this uh, upside down parabola, right? Um, we'll just get a line, but um, entry and exit will make sure that price is equal to marginal cost. So our long run equilibrium basically is that firms are going to enter and exit until we get to this uh, minimum average cost, uh, which is then going to be equal to uh, our um, price. And that will give us our market equilibrium in the long run. 
And that really just depends on entry and exit, right? If firms are earning a positive economic profit in the short run, people, because there's free entry and exit, firms are going to enter uh, until um, you know the price goes down to the point where it is equal to the minimum average cost. And remember, of course, the minimum average cost always uh, crosses the marginal cost curve right there. Uh, and so then economic profits will be zero in the long run. All right, so let's compare that to monopoly. So with a monopoly, there's only one firm, right? So it doesn't matter whether we're talking about uh, homogeneous goods or heterogeneous goods because there's just one good. Um, and there's no other firm that produces substitute products. Now that's probably the most unrealistic thing, right? But you can think of you know things that we now regulate, things like electricity, water, where there's really no other option. Um, barriers to entry are sufficiently high to allow only one firm in the market. So those barriers could be, you know, sort of natural barriers in terms of really large fixed costs. They could be strategic barriers that the firm is producing, putting up there, or they could be legal barriers, right, uh, in terms of like a patent. Um, and so now the monopolist demand is just the market demand. So it's downward sloping. And that means that the monopolist can choose any point along the demand curve that is going to maximize its profit. And so we assume that there is, they are profit maximizer. And of course, there's no frictions or other market imperfections. So how does the monopolist make this choice? Well, because we write our inverse demand curve like this, it's almost easier. It's always easier to choose Q instead of P, but you can do the exact same problem and choose P uh, instead of Q and you get the same answer, right? Um, so our marginal cost in this case is just C. So total revenue is P times Q minus CQ. And then we take the P and we take the formula uh, from the inverse demand curve and we put A minus BQ into our profit function. And so profit is A minus BQ, that's P, times Q minus total cost, which are CQ. Then we distribute the Q, we get AQ minus BQ squared minus CQ. And that's our profit function. And that's what we're trying to maximize. And so in order to maximize that, we need to take the derivative with respect to Q. Now this is easy, right? Because it's just a quadratic. Um, and so the derivative of a linear term like AQ and CQ is just the coefficient. So that's A and minus C. And then the derivative of a quadratic is the exponent. So two times the coefficient B. So it's minus two B. And then you reduce the exponent by one. So uh, two becomes one. And so it just becomes linear. And so we set that equal to zero, right? That's going to be the, the top of our profit um, function, right? An upside down parabola because it's a, a negative quadratic. And so we get A minus 2BQ minus C equals zero or 2BQ equals A minus C. We divide by 2B. We get Q star equals A minus C over 2B. So that's our quantity. How do we get our... Uh, price, well, we just plug that back into the inverse demand curve. And so P star equals A minus B times Q. Well, this is Q, A minus C over 2B. Uh, the Bs cancel out and we get A minus A minus C over 2. So the negative, uh, the double negative becomes a positive. Uh, so A minus A over 2 is just A over 2 and then plus C over 2. So it's just A plus C over 2. And then we can calculate uh, profit as well, right? Profit is just going to be um, total revenue minus total cost, which in this case is just going to be quantity times price minus cost. So then that becomes A minus C over 2, and we get A minus C squared over 4B because it's 2 times 2B in the denominator. So this is our picture of the monopoly problem, right? We've got our constant marginal cost, which is equal to average cost. We've got our demand function. We've got our marginal revenue function, which in the case of linear demand always has the same intercept, but a slope that is twice as steep. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That gives us our profit maximizing quantity. The only thing to remember to be careful about is that when you're graphing your um, profit maximizing price, you go up to the demand curve and then over, and that's your profit maximizing price. That's the A plus C over two. And then the quantity is A minus C over two B. So where is the profit in this graph? Well, the profit is the green, right? So price minus cost times quantity, that's the green rectangle. 
Um, remember, in perfect competition, all of these three colored rectangles would be consumer surplus. There's no profit um, in perfect competition. And so the consumers get all of the surplus. In this case, the monopoly gets the green uh, pro producer surplus, which is gross profit. Um, consumers get the blue triangle, that's consumer sur surplus. And then we lose the red triangle, right? That's our dead weight loss. Um, so if you're asked to calculate the dead weight loss, that's just gonna be one half times the difference in the monopoly price minus the perfect competition price, which is just C. Uh, times the difference between the monopoly quantity times the perfect competition quantity, or the other way around, really. Um, and so that is dead weight loss. And what is dead weight loss? It's a measure of the total surplus that's lost compared to competitive equilibrium, because all of these trades that would happen in perfect competition don't happen in monopoly, right? We're only producing at this amount, at point F, uh, instead of producing all the way at the perfect competition level. Um, so that's the comparison between perfect competition and monopoly. Uh, in the other review videos, we'll go over um, the oligopoly. So we'll go over Corneau, Bertrand, uh, and then uh, Stackelberg.